Alright guys, so today we are going to talk about Sika calls and the different calls that are readily available that are on the market. We are also going to talk about which ones are our favorites. Now, these are not necessarily which ones will be your favorites. These are just the ones that you know we prefer for the way that we call in our past experience. Um, Derek, take it away. Well, Sika deer hunting appeals to both of us because of the ability to call to these animals. Uh, we're both avid turkey hunters, we're avid waterfowl hunters, and in both of those, it's all about that interaction between you and the animal. Uh, same can be said for Sika deer, and I think that's why we prefer Sika deer over whitetail hunting, where it's more or less, I don't know, less interaction, so to say. Not that we're any experts on this matter. Um, we're, we're fairly new into this game. Absolutely. Um, but we enjoy it, we enjoy it a lot, and being as hard-headed as both of us are, we want to learn how they talk and figure out the best way to master it. And part of that is by seeing what the available calls are. Right. So first on our list, we're going to talk about the Sika seducer. Doug Wakefield was a state biologist for 35 years. Very, very knowledgeable guy, uh, makes a hell of a call and is probably one of the most common calls that are out there on that marsh today. Um, so here's the Sika seducer. It operates off of a tone board. It's a reed that slides across the tone board. You kind of use your tooth pressure against that tone board to control your pitch and and then you add a varying amount of blow pressure. Um, it does have these little green rubber bands. You can slide, you can move them around to get them into the right position. You can use them without the rubber bands, uh, but it is an option. It helps the ease of the call. Um, so here we're gonna get, we're gonna talk some of the vocalizations that, that Sika deer make, the most common that you're gonna hear is gonna be the mew from the hind and the bugle from the stag. So uh, the seducer makes a pretty decent mew. It is on the louder side, which is great for when it's windy, um, but I have trouble toning it down to where I like to use it on a regular basis, but um, it is a very good option. So here's the mew from the Sika seducer. So Doug Wakefield does have a really great instructional, uh, some audio on his website. Uh, we'll put that link in the description. Uh, could probably do it a lot better justice than I can, but here's one option that's out there, the Sika Seducer. Uh, I do like the bugles a lot on this call, so we'll get into the bugles. cool thing about this is with that varying tone board you can kind of really get down on some of those lower notes that they make at the tail end of their bugles so but neat little call again this is the staple of Dorchester County um, great call to have out in the marsh and I don't know but practice you gotta <laughs> practice with this because Trust me, you don't want to be that guy that sounds like a clown and gets mentioned on Facebook with everybody bitching about you. <laughs> Alright guys, so next up we have Charlie Messina's call and he is out of Wilmington, Delaware. He makes competition game calls, makes a bunch of turkey calls as well as the Sika call. And this is a hind call, so it's designed to replicate the mew of the hind. It is not necessarily designed to replicate the bugle of a stag, although some people have said that they can get a bugle out of it. I honestly personally haven't tried because I've just got my hands on this thing, so I've been just practicing with getting the mews for it. Um, it is a reeded call that has these two plastic tone boards on the top and the bottom of the call and the way that you blow it is you pinch here with your teeth and then stick, for me, I stick my tongue right up against the edge of it and I can get that nice squealy part that the hinds seem to get. So here is the, the sexy Sika. The thing I do like about this is that you can change the pitch and the tone and the loudness of it by just where you change and put your teeth. 
Um, it is a more quiet call than especially like Doug's call, which is definitely more loud. So on a quiet day, this one is, I think, a pretty decent sounding call. All right, so the next call we're gonna talk about is the Seeker Reel. Uh, this is a, one of my favorite little calls. Um, it's very easy to use, I find. It's a, it's a little different. It's a very different style than any of the other kind. It's basically a diaphragm. It's got a latex reed inside of it. Um, it's just working off of a little hinge. It's got a, a sponge to kind of compress and keeps the air sealed. And as you squeeze, you blow air, you blow air into it with it fully compressed, and then you kind of let up as the note protrudes, and that's where he gets the break of the mew. What I like about it is it's really easy to control. It has a good pitch, has a good mew sound. Um, what I don't like about it is sometimes I, I struggle to get a really good seal on it and I get a little airy sound in addition to the mew, which I'm not a big fan of. I don't know how much impact that would have on the deer, but a deer doesn't make that sound. They just make the mew. So just something to keep in mind. Um, you can bugle with this. It's not very loud, uh, but you do have the flexibility of being able to control it a little bit. Um, so I'll try that. Not my favorite on the bugle, but I really like the muse that comes out of this one. So again, that's the Seeker Reel. Uh, the call maker's from Colorado, originally from Maryland, which is probably what gave him the idea to come up with the Seeker call, so. Next on our list is the Nordic Sika call. This came from Sweden. Uh, you do have to pay a pretty penny to have this one shipped over. Um, I know that was that was the biggest thing was shipping it. it so here's the Nordic. Uh, this is a reeded call. It's got a bugle tube on it. It does have a pretty decent bugle. Uh, the mews are very loud on it. I'm not a huge fan of the mews, but here we go. Very loud call, which would be nice on a windy day, which sometimes you need that sound to carry, but in my opinion, a real deer doesn't call that loudly, so why are you trying to emulate it? Um, the bugles though, they sound pretty decent. drag out those long notes, uh, get it to break over and get that, that rasp and that moan. Uh, they do make some really cool sounds uh, outside of just that. So the moaning is, is kind of, you can get some little extra character out of this one that you can't get in some of the other calls. So next up, we have diaphragm calls. And I had this idea a couple years ago, and I'm sure I'm not the first person to have this idea. I'm sure there's other people that have had this idea probably before I was born. But being the turkey hunters that we are, I naturally gravitate towards a diaphragm call. And 
I thought that I had the idea with the diaphragm call, the turkey call, and I could never get it quite right. So I did a little bit of investigating, looked into elk calls, and elk calls seemed to have a pretty close tone to what I wanted to do for the sheep calls. So ended up buying a couple of elk calls, trying them out, and I really, really like the versatility and the sounds that we're getting out of these diaphragm calls. Absolutely. Um, and I contacted Jason Phelps at Phelps Game Calls, and he says he does have some Sika calls that are in the works, and he does not have them um, into production right now. He kind of got wrapped up with, you know, this little thing called elk. So he uh, doesn't have them as yet for production, but it is something that he is working on. However, he told me what calls of his to try that would, be, that would work best for getting the high-pitched tone, tones of our Sika deer versus an elk. So... The ones that we both kind of like best for the bugle is called the Pitch Black 3. It's got a black latex reed on it and it is just, I think it's the best sounding one that we have tried so far for the bugles. The one that I like best for doing the softer high muse is, I think it's called the Green Amp. It's got a blue latex reed on it. I can do the muse really well on this one. I just personally prefer this one. It's just a hair easier for me to blow to get the mew out of, but either way they're both very, very versatile calls. So here's the mew. So, as you just heard, we're able to completely change the different pitches, volume, tone, all of that very, very quickly and easily. And again, we do have quite a bit of experience practicing with turkey calls, so it's not much different. And I think that's why we're both able to naturally go to these. So if you're not good with a turkey call and a diaphragm, this may not be the best thing for you. You might want to look at some of the other options, but this is just our take on it. Um, but again, we have two totally different sounds there, there from the two different calls, and that's why I like them. And then to do the bugle. Now we do have the bugle tube up here, and we both bought the bugle tubes to try them out. I don't necessarily think that they are necessary for calling Sikas in the marsh because the volume that you get out of that thing with the tube is tremendous <laughs> and I feel like every deer within several miles would be able to hear me as well as every single hunter within several miles and I don't think that that's necessary. So we did try it but I don't think that we're actually going to use the bugle tubes in the marsh but to get the uh, actual bugle out Same call, it's uh, the Pitch Black 3. So that about wraps up what we got for you guys today. Um, hopefully we provided some substance for you. Uh, we're not any experts in the secret calling department, but what we have done is we've, if anything, purchased these calls and here they are in front of you. You can make the decision on your own if you're looking to buy some calls. So uh, there's that. Um, we appreciate you guys following along. Feel free to like, subscribe, share with your friends, whatever you gotta do. Write us a nasty comment. We don't care. We're out here to have fun. And again. And if you guys know of any other calls, drop you know a comment below and let us know what those other calls are. If you have any other tips or tricks that you don't necessarily want to share out there on the interweb, but you wouldn't mind passing along, we're always open to new ideas as well. So yep. uh, we like learning new things. To, yeah, feel free to drop us a, a comment on Instagram or Facebook as well. All right, take care.